Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hope you're doing well. We are continuing our reading of Thomas Hobbes Leviathan. We're back at it. Got more time. Uh, things have been very tight, so I always try to squeeze in content and, you know, keep the channel going because I love it so much and it's my hobby at this point. And so, let us continue on this wonderful book, chapter 14. We are in of the first and second natural laws and of contracts of Hobbes. Hobbes is a unique writer. This book is uh, with the older versions of English, which by reading it, we often become more versed in vocabulary and how we can instantly take something spelled differently and put it into our modern vernacular yeah. so if I ever slip or something you know why because there'll be a word there and I'll have to like quickly switch it as I read so let's continue this up and because the condition of man as hath been declared in the precedent chapter is a condition of war of everyone against everyone in which case everyone is governed by his own reason, and there is nothing he can make use of. That may not be a help unto him in preserving his life against his enemies. It followeth that in such a condition every man has a right to everything. So every man has a right to everything when it's you're in this state of war, the condition of man. You're governed by your own reason, and you have to do what you can to survive. So the natural right of every man to everything sounds pretty intense. Even to one another's body. <laughs> no, thank you. Get away. So a man in a state of nature is nasty, brutus, and short. Oops. Which is something he has spoken about. Now he, I believe, lived through the English Civil War. So he saw a part of humanity that was pretty ugly. And therefore, as long as his natural right of every man to everything endureth, there can be no security to any man. So notice this. If you don't have this sort of common pact, it's kind of everyone for themselves, there's less security. How strong or wise soever he be of living out the time which nature ordinarily alloweth men to live, and consequently it is a precept or general rule of reason that every man ought to endeavor peace as far as he has hope of obtaining it, and when he cannot obtain it, that he may seek and use all helps and advantages of war. So, you strive for peace, you need to go as far as you can in obtaining it. But when you can't, you need to look at the advantages of war. The first branch of which rule containeth the first and fundamental law of nature, which is to seek peace. So he contends that a fundamental law of nature is to seek peace. Well, through peace comes prosperity. I like my community being peaceful. The older I get, the more I value peace. Rabble rousers belong in their concrete jungles or in their shitholes. There comes a point where people who don't want peace, who want loudness, chaos, viciousness, they don't belong in the areas where there is peace. And so it's up to people to rally together to push those types out so that we can seek peace. To seek peace and follow it. The second. The sum of the rights of nature. Which is by all means. We can. To defend ourselves. Defending ourselves is extremely important. Especially when. You need to have some type of second amendment. To protect yourself against. Drug addict criminals who get. Their weapons illegally. Or will just plain bite and wrestle you. I'll win you. You have a right to defend yourself. 
from this fundamental law of nature, by which men are commanded to endeavor peace, is derived this second law, that a man he willing when others are so too, as fair forth, as for peace, and defense of himself, he shall think it necessary to lay down his right to all things, and be contented with so much liberty against other men, as he would allow other men against himself. So, to be contented with so much liberty against another person that you would allow against yourself. Hmm. For as long as every man holdeth this right of doing anything he liketh, so long are all men in the condition of war. So if you can do whatever you want, you're in the condition of war. So when we hear people talk about, makes me think about how they say, oh, we're a free society. Like, huh, yeah, free, but this leads people to often say, I don't need religion to control me. I'm free. And you're like, are we becoming in a condition of war? Where societal norms are not being met. Hmm. It's something very interesting to think about, isn't it? But if other men will not lay down their right as well as he, then there is no reason for anyone to divest himself of his. For that were to expose himself to prey. Yeah, so if... This reminds me of this, just the Second Amendment argument, just to reiterate that, because if that person is not going to lay down their right to self-defense and to have this sort of liberty that puts them in a state of war, if you lay down your arms, you become prey. This is so important. Like, if you're in Chicago, you're in Oakland, in these dangerous places, and liberals are disarming you, eh, you are now the prey. You are now at the mercy of a criminal. The criminal should be deathly afraid of committing any act of atro any atrocity. Right? They should be fearful of losing their life. But if everyone's afraid, they just become like these fish in a barrel. A criminal wants you to become prey. Don't make it easy for them. Which... No man is bound to, rather than to dispose himself to peace. This is that law of the gospel, whatsoever you require that others should do to you, that do ye to them. So the golden rule, whatever you do unto others, you know, make sure that you want it done to yourself. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you, right? That's a another a golden rule. It's not, the golden rule isn't just... Whoever has the gold makes the rules. And that law of all men, quod tibi feri non vis alteri ne faceris, to lay down a man's right to anything, is to divest himself of the liberty of hindering another of the benefit of his own right to the same. You see a lot of liberty talk here. It's very interesting because liberty, rights, what you're entitled to is it's a very prominent question with how you would govern society. For he that renounceth or passeth away his right giveth not to any other man a right which he had not before. Because there is nothing to which every man had not right by nature. So there is nothing to which every man had not right by nature. So the rights that nature gives you. That would be the life to, to, to self-preservation. Self-defense. We I call it God-given right. He's calling it a right by nature. Then you have to remember the state of nature. The fundamental laws of nature that he's talking about. So one of that is... The endeavor for peace. Yeah? Very interesting. But only standeth out of his way that he may enjoy his own original right, or original right, without hindrance from him. So being able to enjoy something without being hindered by someone else. 
So liberty, it's like not being hindered by the government. A classic Americana is like, give me liberty or give me death. Right? You don't want big government uh, nanny stating you. Not without hindrance from another. So that the effect which redoundeth to one man by another man defects of right. It but so much diminution of impediments to the use of his own right original. So the thing is, though, if you take this, you're like, okay, you have a right to use your body how you want. Should you get a bunch of abortions? Is that healthy for society? See what I'm saying? Okay, you can drink 17 bottles of vodka, but is that good for you? Is that good for society? Can you be productive? You know, a good parent? You gotta think about that kind of stuff. So, yeah, you have the liberty to do that, but should you? Should someone be there to take that liberty away from you? Think about how this argument, a similar vein of that argument, is used to legalize tax and regulate all drugs, which I disagree with. They'll say, ah, you know, they can put whatever they want in their body as long as they're not hurting nobody else. Their liberty is their body, all right to do it. Their bodily sovereignty. But I'd say it's better for the system as a whole to not allow such uh, degenerate, vile behavior to be shown publicly. Right is laid aside either by simple renouncing. So if you're going to put a, a, a right aside, you can renounce it or by transferring it to another. Okay, so if you want to lay down a right, you can renounce it or transfer it to somebody else. That means let them be the ones to delegate it. Let them be the ones to choose. Sort of like a, uh, a council body or something. By simply renouncing when he cares not to whom the benefit thereof redoundeth. So if you renounce it and you don't care who gets the reward from it. Then that's you know what's going to happen. By transferring when he intendeth to benefit thereof to some certain person. So that the other person gets that benefit. Or persons. And when a man hath in either manner abandoned or granted away his right. Then is he said to be obliged or bound. Or to hinder those to whom such right is granted. Or abandoned from the benefit of it. And that he ought. And it is his duty. Not to make void that voluntary act of his own. And that such hindrance is injustice. So a hindrance being at injustice. That's an interesting phrase. Hindrance. If you try to hinder that. It's an injustice. So liberty is justice. Liberty and justice for all. Hey. That's in the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. So if you see injustice is a hindrance. And liberty and justice are the opposite of that. <laughs> That's interesting. You can see the language here. You can sort of see the European mindset. And injury as being sinjul. The right being before renounced. Or transferred. So that injury or injustice in the controversies of the world. Is somewhat like that which in the disputation of scholars is called absurdity <laughs> for as it is there called an absurdity to contradict what one maintained in the beginning so in the world it is called injustice an injury voluntarily to undo that so an injury is injustice if you hinder the liberty you're injuring them causing an injustice you follow which from the beginning he had voluntarily done. The way by which a man either simply renounceth or transferreth his right is a declaration or signification by some voluntarily and sufficient sign or signs that he doth so renounce. So you gotta let people know you're transferring it or renouncing it. 
or transfer or hath so renounced, or transfer the same to him that accepteth it. And these signs are either words only or actions only. Okay, so words only, words and actions. Actions speak louder than words. You gotta say it or do it to show your renunciation or your transfer. Interesting. And these signs are either words only or actions only, or as it happens most often, both words and actions. And the same are the bonds by which men are bound. Okay, so bonds by which men are bound and obliged. When you're bonded to something, you are obliged to them. I think we forget a lot of that. You're obliged, what's obligatory. They have their own strength, not from their known nature. For nothing is more easily broken than a man's word. Ooh. <laughs> but from fear of some evil consequence upon the rupture. That's interesting. So, if you break your word, you're going to be, you know, you won't do that. You won't break your word as easily. So there's going to be some terrible consequence if you're breaking that, you're rupturing that. The way he worded that was pretty cool, right? Nothing is more easily broken than a man's word. <laughs> That's crazy. You see, this, the way they phrase things, you're like, ah. It's like old world. Fascinating. Very, very intense. He had some Latin phrases. He had some Bible stuff in here. Really getting at, you know, the right of nature. The fundamental law of nature. Talking about peace, being in a condition of war. Transferring your rights, renouncing your rights. To divest yourself of the liberty Words and actions, bonds, injury, injustice, absurdity. It's a pretty dense reading. I like it very much. I hope you did as well. That's about a nice dense chunk in your diet of knowledge this week. Hopefully you keep on staying tuned for the rest of the reading of this book. If you'd like to join my blog, it's www.subscribestar.com slash Hope to see you there.